if you haven't got enough of uh, sunny, uh, let's go outside kind of icons, well then take a look at this one. Um, in this video we'll learn how to create this uh, barbecue icon. Uh, and creating it uh, can get a little tricky and requires uh, the usage of some just a bit more advanced techniques. Uh, but fear not, uh, you got me to guide you so the whole process will be uh, really enjoyable. Okay, so let's start. And we will start as usual with uh, duplicating the artboard. Uh, I will grab the artboard tool or I could always use the Shift O shortcut. Mm, but uh, before I start duplicating the artboard, uh, I will make sure that Move Copy Artwork with Artboard uh, is not selected. Uh, we, we only want to copy the artboard itself, not the artwork. Okay, so now we can clone an artboard, and cloning it is uh, just like with any, any other shape in Illustrator. Uh, I mean, we can simply select it with the artboard tool, hold down the Shift key and the Alt key to clone it to the right, uh, just like so. Uh, there is one more thing I'd like to do here before I move on. Uh, I want to add guides to mark the center spot of my artboard, uh, but I want them to be artboard dependent. So to drag a guide out, uh, I want to have rulers active and the easiest way to make them active is by pressing the Ctrl R shortcut. Um, and then still with the uh, artboard tool active, I will drag one uh, vertical guide. And I will put it uh, roughly in the center. It doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, if you can't see your guys, uh, that's because you have uh, their visibility turned off. Uh, just press the control semicolon on your keyboard to toggle their visibility. Uh, or you could always go to the view menu, guides, show or hide guides. Now I'll drag a horizontal guide, just like that. And okay, we are done with setting the artboard up. Uh, let's move on to creating a new layer. And um, for that I will go to the layers panel. Uh, notice that I I can still be um, in the artboard tool, it can still be active, uh, it doesn't affect my workflow here. And in here I will uh, alt click the new layer icon, uh, so I can get a layer options dialog box uh, where I will name my layer as uh, barbecue. Okay, I'll simply click, click OK. And I will also lock the, the original layer by clicking in this spot to, uh, to left from the layer's name. Uh, which brings up this padlock icon. Uh, you know, I'll do it just so I don't mess it up accidentally. And okay, I am ready to create my icon. And I will start with the... Um, <laughs> to tell you the truth, um, I don't even know what, what it's called. Uh, is it the undercarriage? Uh, well, anyway, uh, we'll start with this bottom part and the wheels. So uh, the first thing I'm, I'm going to do is create a rectangle. Uh, of course with the help of the rectangle tool that I will activate by pressing the M key on the keyboard. And I will draw a rectangle. Mm, just like that. Um, I, don't want to have, uh, I don't want to have a fill, uh, I only want it to have stroke. And I also won't need this bottom part either, so um, I'll select this bottom path uh, with the direct selection tool and I will simply uh, delete it. So what I have right now uh, is an open path uh, that I will apply an effect to and for that I will go to the effect menu. I will choose warp and in here I will choose arc. And uh, in the band option, I will enter a negative value. Something between minus 10 to minus 15 should be good. Now, since it's um, still a live effect, uh, I will expand its appearance in the object menu. And I want to choose expand appearance. Okay, so far so good. Uh, I'll make the stroke significantly thicker. Uh, I'll go up to maybe 25 pixels. And in the stroke panel, I'll make the corner round. Now I'll go to the object menu again, because I want to transform the stroke into a shape. And I'll choose expand. And I'll just hit OK. Quite a lot of steps to take just to create this shape, right? 
Now let's get to the wheels. Uh, first, I'm going to create intentionally two big circles by using the ellipse tool, of course. So I will make it active by pressing the L key. Then I'll start drawing somewhere here. And by the way, I'm holding down the shift key to constrain the proportions. Okay, um, now I will uh, hold down the shift and the alt keys to, together to clone it to the right. Okay. Uh, now I will copy the left circle uh, into my clipboard because I will uh, need it later. And um, let me explain why I did all that. Well, what I want to do now is to create these arcs right here that we can see in the original icon. Uh, and I want to do it in just one step. So with the help of the Pathfinder tool, uh, I want to unite these two ellipses. So I will go to the Pathfinder tool and click Unite. And now I want to subtract them, making sure that all the ellipses are selected. And I want to subtract them from the shape that's beneath them. And remember that I'm still storing an ellipse in my clipboard, so I will just paste it in front. And um, I will make it uh, a bit smaller uh, using the Scale tool, which I will access by pressing the S and then the Enter key on the keyboard. And I will scale it uniformly to around uh, maybe 80 or 85%. Okay. Uh, and now I will hit the S key and Enter again to make it smaller once more. Uh, but uh, this time I will shrink it to around uh, 50%. Uh, and um, I will not hit OK, but I will hit Copy. And again, I will copy the smaller ellipse in the clipboard, because I'm going to need it in a second. And now in the Pathfinder tool, I will select minus front, making sure I get both the ellipses selected. Uh, and again, I will paste in front the ellipse I just copied to my clipboard. And I'll make it smaller again. Uh, I think that the same value as before will suffice. Uh, will suffice so 50% or, or anything around 50% will be okay. And now we got the first wheel created. That was pretty laborious, don't you think? Um, well, now I will select both these shapes and um, holding down the shift and the alt keys, I will clone them to the right just like so. And lastly, I will group these wheels together. And yeah, finally, they are done. Yes, they are done. Okay, uh, now the really last thing to do at this point is to add this um, horizontal bar and we can see uh, in the original icon. And let me show you how I would approach this. Um, instead of creating a new element, uh, I will use what I already have. I mean, uh, with the direct selection tool, I grab this path right here. I will copy and paste it in front. And now I will make it smaller with the help of the scale tool. I think that should do it. Now I will press the, the shift key and the right arrow at the same time to move it to the right. Now I will reflect it with a little bit of help from the Reflect tool, which I will activate by pressing the O key on the keyboard. Now I'll hit Enter, and in this dialog box uh, I want to reflect it vertically, and I will hit Copy just like so. Now I'll move this uh, newly created path to the right, um, to about here, and with both these paths selected, I will press the Ctrl J command twice to join them. And essentially I created a rectangle that I am looking for. Okay, from this point on uh, it will only get easier and easier, trust me. Okay, so let's now create this grill's lid. Um, and I want to start with creating an, an ellipse by holding down the Alt key. And of course I will access it by pressing the L key on the keyboard. And um, I will try to align it nicely with the rest uh, of the icon. And um, it's pretty important, guys, to make uh, this ellipse uh, have a nice curvature that, uh, that it fits uh, the bottom part. Okay, that should do it. Um, you can always um, make it look nicer uh, with the free transform tool or, or simply by um, selecting it with the selection tool and then playing around with it with its shape and curvature. Um, but this looks okay for me. 
Okay, um, and I also want to make sure that it has a black fill and no stroke. Now I will select the top anchor point with the direct selection tool and I will simply delete it. Um, this half circle is now an open path of course, so I will simply join it by using the um, Ctrl J shortcut. Now I will create this sort of a tray and I will do it uh, with the rounded rectangle tool, uh, so I will grab it from my tools panel and I will drag a rounded rectangle just like so. Okay, almost done. Let us now create the handle uh, again with the rounded rectangle tool. Uh, okay, it will be smaller than the lid of course, than the tray I mean. And now what I want to do is uh, I want to rotate this guy, uh, of course with the rotate tool which I can quickly access by pressing the R key on the keyboard. And I will establish the rotation origin point on the leftmost anchor point. And I will rotate it holding down uh, the Alt key to clone it, just like that. And of course uh, I will move it to the right just a bit. Okay. Now let's close the lid uh, with the um, ever so handy reflect tool. So I'll select the bottom part of the lid. I'll go for the reflect tool, which I can access by pressing uh, the O key on the keyboard. And I will alt click in the middle of this rounded rectangle. I will choose horizontal and I will click OK. Now that was easy, wasn't it? Um, okay, so let's finish the shape with the handle on top. So again, with the ellipse tool, I'll draw an ellipse. I'll give it a nice uh, thicker stroke. And I will want to unit, uh, unite it uh, with the lid. So I'll go to the object menu, I'll select expand and I'll click OK. And lastly, um, as I just mentioned, I will unite these two guys in the Pathfinder tool. Now, the last thing to do is to create uh, this kind of a reflection uh, on the right. And I will do that uh, with the Pen tool. So I will make it active by using the P key. Or I could, I could of course go to the Tools panel and choose Pen tool uh, from here. And I will make sure that it has white stroke and no fill. And I will simply create a nice looking curve, um, just like that, um, that will have a, a thicker stroke. And I also want to, wanted to have a round cap, um, and I will set it up in the stroke panel, just like so. And yeah, we are done with the base shape. That took a while, didn't it? But I don't think it was too, it was too difficult, right? Okay, I'm almost ready to start coloring it, uh, but since, uh, as we can check with the original, uh, we have this shadow going through the right side of the lid, um, so we need to create a base for it. And we will do that first by selecting the top and bottom part of the lid. I will copy them and I will paste them in front. And uh, now I'll go ahead and draw with the line segment tool a straight line going through the middle uh, of the barbecue, uh, but I don't want it to be too long. I'll add both parts of the lid to the selection by clicking on them, holding down the Ctrl and Shift keys together. And uh, I will choose Divide it uh, in the Pathfinder tool. Now I'll ungroup those guys. I could go to the Object menu and choose Ungroup or use the Shift Ctrl plus G shortcut. And now I will get rid of uh, these uh, left parts. And there we go. I got half of the lid uh, that will act as a shadow. It's finished. Now it's time to start adding some colors. Okay, so I will color the lid and the handles. I will color the tray. And I will color the base. And lastly, 
I'll make the shadow part black. And um, I want to set its uh, blending mode to soft light. Um, I'll also drop down the opacity to around 80%. Okay, so what's left to do is to create a background. And uh, I will start drawing an ellipse while holding down the Shift and Alt keys to constrain the proportions and start drawing from the center point like so. Of course, I am accessing the ellipse tool uh, by pressing the L key on the keyboard. Okay, when I'm done, I will move it to the bottom of the stack. I'll give it a proper color. And voila, we are done. Now, wasn't that easy? It took a while, but it was easy. <laughs> I think it was easy. Well, it's because I make it easy and you will see some more simple and spectacular effects in other videos. More flat icons are still to come, so stay tuned.